Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Join this wonderful pizza from Slice on Broadway, the people in Pittsburgh that provide good pizza to podcasters. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgaton on Twitter for the awesome cast, and uh, this is your uh, Geek Weekly podcast <laughs> where we talk tech and social media and so much more uh, here at the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. With me on the couch, we got everybody in the studio! Yeah! Everybody, the entire world yes, is in, in the, the studio! studio. Uh, we don't have <laughs> enough pizza! Help us, Slice! <laughs> with us, of course, back in the studio in Studio E. No, that's the other one. John Chichilla! <laughs> Who am I? There he is. There I am. <laughs> There's TVs everywhere. Add Chilla on the tours. Yes, you're kind of right surrounded by there. him. This, this yeah. is the first time both of you have been here at the new location around the corner where, from where I usually have the couch. So. You look very tan. I've been working outside. <laughs> <laughs> I've been working outside. Also with us, Katie, <laughs> do, Katie Dudas. <laughs> at Kay Dudders on the Twitter joining us as well back in the studio. How you doing? I don't look as tan. I need to work on that. <laughs> You need to work on that. Also, I need to turn your mic on. Oh. Well, hey, guys. That's me. No, no, that's a good word, Sad. I just need oh, to turn sorry. it on. There you are. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So, <laughs> like I said, this is the awesome cast. We like to talk about all the geekery and technology that's uh, got us interested over the uh, past week. All the news, awesome things of the week, so much more. You can tell us your awesome thing of the week on the Twitters, at Mayhem. I'm not Katie. I'm not Katie. There we go. Everybody wants to um, me. On Twitters, <laughs> uh, at, at AwesomeCast. Of course, you can look up the Awesome Cast on Facebook and Google Plus and, and uh, all kinds of places. And uh, let us know what you think. And uh, please, uh, you can join us here live at live.awesomecast.net every Tuesday about 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Just kind of shoehorned in a bunch five other podcasts on Podcast Day. You can come home from work. Get some pizza from your place of choice, or if you're close enough, SliceOnBroadway.com. And just join us for the entire night to talk all kinds of methods of geekery here on the uh, Sorgatron Media Podcast Universe. Thank you, Matt Carlos, for that idea. Um, so let's get into it with our awesome things of the week. What do you got for us, Chilla? What do I got? Con. So I just went to Comic-Con, WizardCon, Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's interesting because over the last couple of years, I've gone to, to that con and there's always people there passing out these little business card type things for con TV. And I was like, yeah, whatever, throw it in the bag, keep going. Um, and I think two years ago I got one and they were like, well, yeah, we our, our website isn't created yet. We aren't, we aren't legitimate yet, but here's, here's some, here's a, here's a card to remind you. Um, so I, uh, like I said, I never paid attention to it. And this time someone came up to me and, and started talking about it. And I noticed that con TV had a giant center stage. If you remember watching G4 TV, um, during San Diego comic con, where they had like kind of like their lift up in the air where they could see the whole entire con floor and did, did interviews and whatnot. It was kind of like that. So I, I definitely decided to, to pay a little more attention to them this time. Um, so con TV is they have an app and they have a website and it gives you all access to all the wizard cons um which to me is pretty darn cool so you can see a live streaming of um david Tennant getting interviewed and billy piper um from or for the love of star trek as i'm looking at right now (laughs) um they have they have a bunch of different Different things that they have pre-recorded from cons. They do live streams during the cons. They also do B-movies and their favorite trailers. Um, There's old school Saturday morning cartoons. Nice. um, Old school TV shows like 21 Jump Street. So they actually got rights to some weird old stuff or maybe stuff that's out of copyright. Yeah, so so that... so And and it's interesting because it's... So it's free with advertising Mm -hmm. or you can pay a small fee and watch without ads which i I think is a a pretty good idea to get people involved um and 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 who wouldn't want to watch shows or movies like a very zombie holiday (laughs) or where was the other one i was there was a b movie that just made me laugh um bikini girls on ice whoa which is a woman's college soccer team 
um, is on their way to a bikini car wash fundraiser. They decide to set up shop in front of an abandoned gas station on the edge of town. Little do they know the place is a stocking ground for a homicidal maniac. So, so uh, there's there's a lot of interesting things on here. What I'm actually interested in, because obviously the different cons are going to have different famous people there, and, and different interviews with those people. Um, also, the interviews and, and Q and A sessions can obviously change from city to city. Um, and I know a lot of them they actually have have taken the same person and done their Q and As from Tulsa to Vegas to Philly to to wherever they're going. Um, wow, they have way. They I thought it was like maybe they'd have some weird out of print kind of stuff. They have Voltron Lion Force and Legend of Zelda from the eighties. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. that's crazy! So, so it's it's for for a free streaming with just general geekery. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty darn impressed with their catalog. And like I said, like I was waiting in line for Stephen Amell's autograph, so I missed one of the cosplaying. Uh, things that I wanted to get workshops that I wanted to go to. And I looked on here and, and they do have recordings from other cities of the same, the same workshop. Mm-hmm. So obviously I don't know if they're going to post Phillies or not, but at least I can get some of the content that I missed. Nice. Um, so nice. I'm, I'm very excited about and this. You, you almost need something like this because <clears throat> they are so big. You were saying how it's kind of become busy, like the New York comic con. Yes. Ones. So I, I mean, you you really do need that to kind of check it out. But also, there's there's the experience, but there's also the I can really just take it in here, you know, much like E3 or something like that. Like I do better serving, say, Awesome Cast or Insert Coin again, just sitting at home and taking in what everybody else is reporting and responding to that and right. watching the live streams and everything. I almost think that you know, I, I think to my experiences at PodCamp mm-hmm. and. Ex- I I can only imagine what goes on in other cities for PodCamp because it's all kind of homegrown concepts that are brought by local people. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that, wouldn't it be interesting if PodCamp could do something like this where there was PodCamp TV and you had every city's, every classroom <laughs> we're recorded. Not, we're not nearly as organized to do right. that. <laughs> well, no, but you would have to organize Pittsburgh and, and every other city right, that does right, it. Right. And obviously, this is this is a company that spun themselves up to do just that. And there's so many cons between Wizard and all the other ones. They can. There's plenty of content. Right. You know, I, I I was poking through here and I had it up here for a second. But um, did you see this uh, morph? My morphing life with uh, 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 Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger. Oh yeah. If if you get a chance to go to Pittsburgh's Wizard Con, mm-hmm. I highly recommend. If you don't get his autograph, at least stopping by his signing booth and paying attention to him because he is the life of the con. Is he? Everybody, he gets up on the tables and dances and cheers people on. And yeah, those those TV episodes of his like season one and season two, they're, they're, the episodes are only 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. But like he is the life uh, of of everything that goes mm-hmm. on from judging the um costume contest to his signing booth to he just wants everyone to be happy and entertained so so yeah i'm actually gonna i'm gonna actually go watch those because i'm sure they they have to be interesting and he is from what i understand at every wizard con and there's like he's he's a regular there's like 25 (laughs) there's like 25 across the country now so now, is this is so? Are these guys independent, or they're hitting not just like the Wizard Cons, right? I, from what I gathered, I don't I don't know if they're independent. Most of the stuff I saw on here was from Wizard Con, mm-hmm. but I'm guessing maybe they but can. Th- br- those are still those. Out. Those are kind of the biggest ones. Is yeah, the and, I, and well, and I think what's happening is, and it's interesting too, because at, at the con, one of the big things Wizard was playing was their stock ticker symbol wow <laughs> because they're now a publicly traded company and i'm <laughs> guessing this is one more way for them to get their name out there but the other thing they've been doing is going into cities that were either having problems organizing their con or going into new cities where there weren't a con where there was a need for one and right. they're spinning them up right 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 so outside of like your san diego and your new york mm-hmm I don't know, and, and grassroots. And looking how big, you know, both of those you named are, 
you know, there's room for this. There's obviously people right. are swarming towards these. So there's enough in between for people to say, hey, I don't know if I can go to New York. Maybe I can hit up Philly. Maybe okay, it's easier for me to get to Chicago and 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 seeing that. I, I'm actually on the about page for them. And it says uh, Con, TV, t- Con TV is a partner of Cinedime, an industry leader in independent content distribution, and Wizard World, the largest Comic-Con producer in the U.S. Okay. Considering how many Wizard World has really kind of, yeah, like you said, bought or spun up they're taking over the pittsburgh comic-con here and uh yeah i could it makes sense this is just a really good kind of uh synergy thing for them so so when you when i i just ran out the wizard world real quick i mean they have 30 cons Jeez. listed right now you will find one yeah mm-hmm. you'll, you'll, and i mean they do they do ones that are kind of non as comic-con and i don't see any on here right now there's this I don't even know what that word is. It's Comic Con China, and it's in China Import Export Complex in Canton. Um, but they do some spinoffs that aren't necessarily as comic related or pop culture related. Um, I've seen some ones that are that are all zombie related or whatnot. Nice. So you, so you will get some some alternatives, um, and I'm sure Con TV would pick those up as well. But I mean. The, the, 30 cons i mean that's that's almost almost one per state mm-hmm. and does nebraska really need a con i think not. <laughs> nebraska <laughs> but but no i mean i mean that being said to your point new york sells out so quickly mm-hmm. um san diego sells out in i think minutes um and this yeah. seems to be the easy way and to get to a con that's at least local to you and and get one of the things that that wizard has done really well it's not just the guests they get to come in but it's all of the the sales and booths that they have going on too and it's it i'm not gonna lie it's it's nowhere near what new york has going for it no. or, and i've never been to san diego but i the thing that i like about philly is they they definitely seem to take into account crowd control ticket sales things of that nature um and they're always constantly looking to improve the experience not try to make a buck and that's just my take on it and talking to to the people that work the con the the people donating their time for the con all of that kind of stuff they really seem to care a lot about the person going not just the money they're making Mm-hmm. And of course, there's controversy. Jo- Jolo John's bringing up in the chat about stories about uh, shady stuff on the business end, and, and that's kind of a, a complaint I hear a lot from like regular con goers of our of our uh, independent comic book friends. So I, I, I'm happy for it because I think it I, I I think it's a big upgrade here for Pittsburgh, and I'm, I'm interested to see what happens when a real con kind of comes to town uh, for that. Well, and, and I hope we, as Pittsburgh, a lot of people go to show that there's interest and they'll keep... Mm-hmm. New location, keep first going. one downtown. Um, mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of the stars and people that are, are coming to the Pittsburgh one aren't necessarily as big as some of the other, like the Philly one. Um, but I think that's something they can grow over time based on seeing that there's a demand for it. And I think Pittsburgh, there's obviously a demand for it. We have Steel City Con like four times a year. Mm-hmm. And in mm-hmm. that has no problem drawing people in um excuse me so for that reason alone i think pittsburgh should have no problem sustaining it what i'm interested in is can we get the demand up to have four days like the chicago's and the philadelphia's um or will we remain a a friday saturday sunday con um and that's what you can see if you go to wizard world and look at the the cons that are the four days are usually the bigger ones and i'm looking like like i said philadelphia um chicago Mm -hmm. and and john's also bringing up read pop who does i think they do both new york and c2e2 in in, in, uh chicago uh they're actually uh, trying to get ahead of them and actually uh scoop them all up before wizard does (laughs) so so there's competition well that's great Mm -hmm. yeah it's awesome i mean yeah and I mean that I I love nothing more than competition because I think it'll help mm-hmm. everyone drive each other to do. A and you've been job. in New York. You've been to C two E two. I have not been to C two E two. Oh, I thought you were. Okay. No, I'd like to go to C two E two. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but I've been fun. to been to Philly and New York, uh, Pittsburgh. Um, I was at a small con years ago in Detroit, but. Mm-hmm. 
Awesome. So uh, go uh, check that out. That's contv.com. I'm going to check out that Green Rangers show for sure. <laughs> uh, Katie, what do you got this week? Oh, I got something else to take selfies with because mm-hmm. that's what I'm here for. Just selfies. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take so, a selfie. Selfies and periscoping your self-eating pizza. Yes, that's what it is. Um, it's Lily. It's a, it's a new drone. Mm-hmm. And it's a little drone about hand size. And to activate it, you literally throw it in the air. And you've got a little tracking device that you hang on to. And you can either program it to go in front of you or alongside you, behind you, or go around you. So it'll follow you as you kind of do your actions. Uh, right now we're watching on the screen. Um, there's a, a guy I think he's snowboarding and uh, Lily is following him. Uh, it goes uh, full HD, 1080p. Um, it can only be airborne for about 20 minutes. And then when it lands back in your hand, it kind of lands very soft in your hand. Uh, it's waterproof. And um, I like this one where the guy just throws it off a bridge and it kind of swoops back up to take his video. And it's only, I think it's like four ninety nine when it first comes out for the first month, and then it's going to go up to eight ninety nine. Oof! But nah, it's, see, I wanted it until you gave the. That's yeah, expensive. Yeah, but for what you're getting, that's not bad mm-hmm. at all, yeah. actually. <laughs> yeah, the batteries aren't changeable, so you're, you know, you're stuck with the recharge mm-hmm. in you, between. Can you manually control it, or it's only it only goes in follow mode? It only kind of goes in follow mode. You could change from the follow to beside you to lead mode to side mode, and then you could do like a loop mode, but it just kind of centering on this beacon. So it's, okay, so it, it you, like you're not controlling it, you're not doing anything. It just kind of goes out, does a pattern, and comes back, mm-hmm. like regardless. Mm-hmm. Wow, or, <laughs> see, that's really cool, isn't it? Neat. It's and it has a camera, and it obviously takes all your pictures. And that's your little beacon there, showing mm-hmm. there in the hand. Sound and uh, video. Wow. Hi, nice little family waving. Look at us. 12 megapixels. Oh, we're watching it at home. How nice. Can, can it tell if it's in? Can it be used indoors? And how does it judge ceiling height? I don't, they don't show it. They don't show <laughs> I think Grandma's taking it outside, thankfully. But uh, <laughs> but but no, I, I definitely wouldn't recommend it. I wonder how. I wonder if it does have any kind of spatial kind of uh, look at that. But uh, that's, that's still, it's really cool. Uh, I mean, this is kind of. It's what a lot of people want. This solves a lot of problems for people, for all the ex gamers, right? Mm-hmm. You, you got a GoPro here. You got a drone following you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's amazing. It's like playing Halo with that little robot following. That's you. I was thinking. Wasn't there wasn't there some kind of drone like that in one of the Call of Duty games? You kind of launch a drone and tag other players and yeah. What well, is the hunter killer drone? Which you just throw when it finds somebody and goes and blows them up. But uh, I'm wondering if you could, you could probably modify this, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we did not give you that idea. No, nope, 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 nope. But that that's really cool. That's uh that's something you could really use. I, I mean and, and you don't have to be a drone expert to do it because I mean that's one of the things uh you, you know we talked about before that idea of buying like the $50 drone so you can learn how to use it cuz you will crash the thing mm-hmm. before you get into something bigger or lose it in the river or something like that. You know, uh, I think about that every day when I try, when I take a train across the river it's like, you know, I'd love to have a drone and blast around in the city, but I don't want to crash it into a river. By accident you know <laughs> especially around here i'm looking at the faqs and one of the questions is can i use lily to spy on my neighbors <laughs> lily is always pointing at you and less than 100 feet from you pro tip best shots are, are at the uh, 10 to 30 foot range uh, also lily's motors make noise so other people will most likely notice <laughs> you are better off climbing a tree and using binoculars i like these guys there's some show there, there's some show i watched where they were getting buzzed by a drone and they were like shooting it out of the air um, just like in their backyard or something like that. But that was a fam- modern family. Was a modern family? Yeah. I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. Uh, awesome. It's- <laughs> I love these guys. Where can I not use Lily according to current FAA guidelines? Near airports, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I thought that's really enforceable, you know. You know, and it always throws me because, I, I mean, for commercial use, drones are not, you're not able to use them yet. But I've been seeing, uh, you know, people, you know, finding on Twitter or LinkedIn stuff, like the people that specialize in shots with the drones. So are they just kind of hoping nobody notices or, you know, I'm not really an expert. We got our friend from uh, from uh, Identified Technology mm-hmm. in here and, and, and clear that up a little bit because I'm sure he's a big expert on that by now since that's really his bo- his business. So so I, I wanted to read. Revi- oh, if you want to check it out, uh, lily.camera. Mm hmm. I like these, do- these domains that are popping up lately. There was dot some camera. I've never. There's, there was another that. one that mm-hmm. was like dot document or something like that that I got hit up on the other day. It, it, these domains have gone insane. 
And I knew they were selling a bunch, but now we we're starting to see a lot of those kind of pop up. And you're, like you're seeing that you, you you see something like Lily dot camera, and you're like dot what? You know what's the next mm-hmm. thing? I'm waiting for a definitive dot three letter thing, right? But uh, I, I I don't know. So uh, Lily dot camera, if you want to check that out again, five hundred bucks plus. I think it was like twenty dollars shipping to start with. So I mean that's not bad if you got scratch for something like that. One you're you're probably way into the stuff already but um but that's not bad for for everything that it does there yeah 20 dollars shipping that's all it takes i guess it's a pretty tiny device 519 afterwards so so i got uh, we talked about this before uh you remember we, we had a uh, uh, talked about z before uh, who had the ipad around pod camp last year and was filming a lot of things and using this app called touchcast you showed me briefly i actually got to visit Oh, I'm not. I can't remember the name of the school. It's a long Catholic name um, out here in uh, Upper Saint Clair, and to see what they're doing. And I talk about this on Basics Ergonomics uh, last week, uh, talking about what they're doing with Touchcast and, and kind of kind of hacking away with the hardware they have on hand to do kind of a new show. Uh, but even more so, they they showed me a bit of what you can do with um, with this Touchcast app, which is which is free on your iPad. Uh, Chilla, did you did you have a chance to check this out? This might I been, did not, but this would be which would have been good for your con visit over the weekend, perhaps, because this is they they sat there and and, and brought up a green screen, for instance, like right in front of me. They had, they had a green wall and they're already set up for it. They can bring up graphics. You can bring up live Twitter streams and flickers and web pages and throw them up. Uh, this is apparently a will I am video that was done entirely in in in, uh, in this application, and which I want to find out how they did that tracking because you see it kind of zoom in on the green screen and him mm-hmm. sitting there. How do you do that tracking? If it does something like that, it's really powerful and something I need to pay another three hundred dollars on Wirecast in order to know how to do. You know, uh, but uh, you know this is all. All brought in through the app these videos you can bring on a youtube video or something and uh it's pretty pretty slick and the idea that you can you know take one of these get a nice holder put it on a tripod they actually did this monday there was a tech ed conference um i think it was in the state where they went and they're doing interviews and they have a good microphone a hand mic that you can hook up to it and uh they have everything they need right there this thing is doing everything that my wire cast with all these graphics you see if you're on video with me and the picture in picture on an ipad at a pretty good clip. And it's it's it does it in post? No, it does it live. So you need but you need so and this is where this is where I kind of had the problem putting two and two together to get what I would feel as decent footage of the con. I feel like if you're gonna ask anyone a question, I can't sit there and hold my phone up, right? Right. And I feel like you need two people, at a minimum two people, to do that right, interview right. and control the whole concept. Right. So just like this, you're going to need more than one. So you, you can't still... be controlling TouchCast while you're doing the Right, cast. unless you're interviewing somebody off camera. Uh, right. And you're stationary. Yeah, yeah. I, I could see it being being not too bad and i'm tired, like you tired, still need a, it's, it's like you still need a camera crew but you don't need a camera right you, like everything is done in there and it's done like you're you know whereas you know even if you have a camera you're going to shoot in something you got to bring it in to final cut to do this to do the video and, and she's actually and i'm wondering how they're doing this because it looks like she's actually controlling the videos on her ipad so i'm wondering if there's some kind of remote feature as well that that will kind of pour it into it and you see she brings up this uh twitter feed in the corner she brings up a full web page this is all being done live in the application and you can queue things up to to See, that's so nice. you can queue things up in advance and, and 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 pop them up as you go and resize them. It's really interesting. And and again, it, like kind of a nice one stop place that you can do all this stuff. And uh, and it's free. Uh, there's there, there's this interesting thing where uh, they have, they have some kind of alignment with UNICEF. It seems. Mm-hmm. And and even even when you get in here. There you can put polls in there, and it, it only they only work the interactivity for other people watching only works when you're on their site at touchcast.com. You go into the account, but you could actually put quizzes in the video. So I'm like, so you could go in and make an interactive video quiz 
situation, just an interactive test of some sort like that. And she's like, yeah, I'm like, well, that's what I spent three quarters trying to figure out the, how to do in director. And now you kids are just doing it here in middle school, you know? <laughs> so that is, it, it's, it's really awesome. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to push things on my iPad three if I try to do the green screen on it, but, uh, uh already kind of poking around with it a little bit. And, uh, unfortunately I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get the screencast. It was working before, but, uh, uh, to show this off a little bit, but, uh, but pretty cool. It's touch cast. It's uh, for iPad, so even iPad Minis. Uh, they were pretty handily kind of switching out between iPad Minis and the iPad Air. I don't know which edition it was. Uh, and it seems like it was handling it pretty well. And it was, it was the first edition iPad Mini, which isn't that comparable to an iPad 2? Am I am I mixing mm. that up a little bit, Shilla? It's the iPad 2 screen with the i probably like a four ish four processor yeah i think okay so that's pretty like that's screen pretty. resolution not the same screen because obviously the screen size is different i think it's the same resolution as the original ipad yes to your point mm -hmm. um not the retina display um and then it has the processor of the, the ipad 4 so to your point i mean if they're if they're pushing that out with that um you might get a. You're gonna probably. Here's the problem. You're gonna have a problem on a three pushing green screen because it's GPU intensive. Oh, and yeah. that's where the the three shortcoming. And, and it's really nice because it's not just that one click green screen. It, it is like you can go in and if you've ever done green screen before, if you just hit the green and and like the kids are actually wearing the, the school uniforms are like a dark green, so they automatically have a little bit of fade out with that. But you can go in and adjust that, and you can fill in the holes and everything. Can you can you record and do any post, or is it all? Like how I don't know how the post works with it. I think it, it's mostly in line, but no, you should be able to go back and post a little bit and do that too. But so, it'll at least do a local recording. Yeah, it drops it all in local. I, nothing, okay. nothing streams. So that's their big problem is they can do all their newscasts with it, but they have nothing to stream out to everybody live for homeroom. And that's what we're, we're like, oh. we're trying to figure out because they have slow enough computers. They, they have Wirecast. They can't put it on like a 2009 iMac, you know, so they're just hitting this technology technology barrier. What we ended up doing was saying, OK, you're going to need them to unlock Twitter and we're just going to periscope your newscast <laughs> out. And at least you're using it for now and you're streaming and the kids are doing something live. Because that was the big thing is no, they were they were pre-recording and posting the videos, but nobody was checking them out. They, they, they need to see them like there that morning. Basically. I wonder if they use something like, um, what did I cover last week from Air Squirrels? Reflector. Mm -hmm. I wonder mm -hmm. if they reflected it and mirrored the, oh, the display probably isn't the same thing that it's recording. Huh? You no, know, actually, we brought this up. This is, yeah. this is one of the, we were trying to figure out all the different ins of outs of how they could do it. Reflector was brought up. I think she's experimented with it a little bit before. But again, like you would lose that quality a bit. Yeah, and drop um, the frames. and I think generally they just don't have computers fast enough that would be able to pull a reflector and stream it out to YouTube Live at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, but but I, I, I their ingenuity was fantastic. That's so cool. I, I mean, again go check out Basic Sorgonomics at Sorgatron .com from uh, last week. I, I really kind of get into that. I think it's Friday's episode if you want to check that out. So and actually if you poke around touch, touchcast.com, oh here's a uh, one of the interactive ones. I can share this touchcast replay. Um, you can get into our stuff, but but it's it's all kind of built in and stuff. And there's a this is actually one of the kind of inspirational things and shows you how you can share stuff and and really kind of get into it. So uh, a lot of fun. And they have a desktop version coming out. They do for Windows. Oh jeez, Windows seven or eight with i five or faster. It's a beta right now. Mm -hmm. But no, I'm I'm thinking. I don't know. I might want to start something up with this. <laughs> You know, and I think it's a great thing for people that want to do like YouTube podcasts, YouTube video. Well, shows. And that's that's my thing is, you, is I, I I could ha I could make time in my day to do something that that's shorter. Mm -hmm. But it's all the I'm not going to have a lot of time to do post, and I'm not going to invest for that small of a hobby in something like Wirecast. So that's kind of my barrier to entry, mm -hmm. and I don't want to just be a webcam. I, I want a little bit of flair. Um, and, and this seems to be the way to do it. Katie, what do you think about this? This is awesome. I want an iPad. <laughs> <laughs> this is, see, that's the problem I got into. <laughs> it's like, ah, I don't know. My... See, especially if you could, even if you could, even if you had to do some minimal clipping together mm -hmm. or just mm -hmm. cutting bits out where you were pausing that's... or some kind of right, like that, right. I think it's well anything you get in here you can save probably to the camera roll pop it into iMovie 
fuss with the ends. I mean, we we did a thing just a couple weeks ago where we shot a how-to video, put it in iMovie on an iPad, and just did the thing right there. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and this is adding a lot of functionality on top of that. I mean, what I do here, like what I'm doing for this show, you got all the fancy graphics and stuff. I'm live switching with you guys. I'm bringing up graphics over here. And then it's done. So TouchCast becomes that function for you. You've already done the graphics as part of the video. You got to set it up in advance whatever you're putting in the video. Well, and I think that's fine. I mean, I think in, in those cases, you, for this type of what you're trying to do, you, you need to have some kind of outline and plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're just shooting from the And head. if it's something you're doing on a regular basis, you have that lined up, you know? Mm -hmm. Every day when I come down here in the morning, it's like, okay, I have this story, and I put it up here, and I drop it up in that uh, graphic over there, and uh, are we good to go? And we talk about it, and it happens, and I put the graphics on at the end, uh, you know, which basically is just drop it into a template. You can create a template in iMovie that has your intro and outro graphics, say, if that's what you need to do, uh, and, and just drop this video that you made here with all your on screen graphics right in there, and you've just streamlined it, pushed it out to YouTube. Well, in some of these, I could even see like doing like a placeholder. Where, like I was saying, in post, you just come back in and drop in the person's Twitter graphic and their mm -hmm. their, their Twitter name. Mm -hmm. If you if if you're doing something like a con and you're doing spur of the moment interviews, right? Mm -hmm. You just have a couple placeholders that are real easy to you know the dimensions and you're going to mask out and you have kind of pre built templates to put the information mm -hmm. back in. Yeah, you can do a lot of those things. You can think about going to a con, you're recording on there, you're doing these things, you hit up your hotel room and you're uploading everything for the day. Right. You know, I mean, or do you don't want to do it at the con because that Internet never holds up. <laughs> right. All right. I want to touch base with, uh, again, who kind of dropped the name a little bit earlier, but Slice on Broadway supporting us here in Pittsburgh. Uh, great pizza. Great stuff. Um, I got the, it, it, it keeps me going. That and that and Spider-Man in this coffee mug. That, that's real good <laughs> stuff, too. Uh, but anyways, but uh, uh, Rico and, I, and, and the group down there are always real awesome down in Carnegie, PA, here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh along the tracks in Beachview, and, uh, and they're really uh, they're really big on freshness. They've been supporting podcasts, Pittsburgh Podcasts with Great Pizza for well over a year now, and uh, we're really excited about about uh, everything they're doing and their expansion, and they're getting recognized. And there was I actually watching some of those videos on their website last week. They got a little bit of a revamp on their site. They actually have stuff about the other location, and uh, it's videos and everything, like I said. And uh, they, they, they talk about this idea. We have like two like landmark pizza places here. One day, I won't tell you where. I won't because this is their ad. Uh, but very close. There's there's a very good pizza in this area, and they're still still cutting out their niche here, and and really kind of becoming a big part of the Beachview community. And uh, it's really cool to see them see them doing very very well. I think they said they've been around five years. Does that seem about right? So, um, and, uh, and, and they, and they can make Hello Kitties. <laughs> They're not afraid. <laughs> Pizza magic. Check them out. Slice on Broadway.com. PG, PGH underscore slice and, uh, slice on Broadway on Facebook and, uh, Instagram. Hey, by the way, anybody that's been going in there and letting them know that you, you heard about them on one of our shows here. Thank you very much. I heard there's been a few, uh, coming in. They said that's definitely working. They're getting people in the door and it doesn't sound like anybody's leaving disappointed. So thanks to them for, uh, uh, supporting podcasting on the Sorgatron Amiga uh, podcast universe. So let's. Uh, I'm trying. I'm still. I'm trying to get used to that. That that new phrasing. I really like that. I want to redo all the posts and everything. So um, let's get into some news. What's got you guys excited uh, for the week here? What are you excited about? What am I excited? So I'm gonna go <laughs> completely. Probably everyone's gonna be like, "What?" <laughs> so it's about Windows, isn't it? No. It's actually about it's about animated gifs. What? Oh no! <laughs> so I'm a huge. I've become obsessed with, and I'm I'm probably don't even pronounce it right. Giffy, G I -P -H -Y. could be Jiffy. I don't know. Could be Jiffy. Sounds too much like peanut butter to yeah, me. Yeah, it's mm. Giffy. Um, so on my phone, I have a keyboard, and in that keyboard, I can literally search keywords. And the keyboard returns animated GIFs because oh. Flex, Flexi has the ability to plug in to, to Giphy. And I can actually take any keyword. It spits back unlimited amounts of animated GIFs. <laughs> and you tap it. It copies the animated GIF to your, your clipboard. 
and you paste it into text messages anything, and it works on iOS, which is, is a rarity sometimes for animated GIFs. Mm -hmm. Well, I, someone has made a Chrome plugin <laughs> in conjunction with Gmail and Inbox, and it's it's a Gmail extension you can you can install, and it gives you that same type of feature in your Gmail. So you can hit a button, insert, search, and I'm the NBA. I don't know why someone would whatever. Um, <laughs> sports. Sports craziness. But but no, right in your Gmail, you can embed animated GIFs. I'm like, this is great. Like, Because I feel like a lot of times text messages just saying okay. Like mm -hmm. doesn't convey. It's like, okay, I guess, yeah, whatever. Or is it okay? Like, you could actually, like, I feel like the GIF is the answer to not conveying your emotion when, you, when you're when you trying to say something. So, so to me, this, this is awesome. Now I need to write more emails just so I can use I this. wish more of these things worked with Inbox. Uh, that's, that's my big thing. Like, even the signature is a big, like, pain in the butt when I'm using Inbox, but Inbox saves me so much. More often lately, I've been getting the little sun animation when I've gone through every one of my emails, mm -hmm. which means I've snoozed half of them for tomorrow. But still, <laughs> it's so satisfying. It's just that peace of mind. And, and, and But then I can't do... Well, I don't know if this would do much for my peace of mind if I had Giphy. But <laughs> uh, but still, like something like this would be would would, would be a, a lot of fun. So and there's a I'm sure there's a lot of I'm sure there's a lot of gifts in there for pro wrestling. Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> sure a lot there's... of them end up a lot of them end up on our message board. So so they're they're, they're out there. They're definitely out there. So awesome. So so uh, you go to the Chrome extensions and you just look up Giphy G I P H Y. Yes, and uh, it should come up right away. Uh, I found Giphy for Gmail right away, and I have added it to Chrome, and we'll we'll see how that goes. I wonder if I wonder I want to refresh my uh, inbox here and see what happens. So so I, how does how does it? What do you press in order to bring something up? There's a little icon. It's a little icon at the bottom. So let me, let me like if you go back to that that TechCrunch article, it shows you. There's an insert from Giphy icon. Okay, so right it's over. It, it's down there actually by that send button. Yeah, it'll pop up. And it's kind of this colored. Um, it's kind of this colored icon. So, oh yeah, I see it in Gmail. And, and their search engine's pretty good. So I mean, it does it does return some pretty good animations or gifs for what you're looking for. <laughs> like they they have it pretty well indexed. Yep, there's some WWE stuff. We're good. We're good. Yay! <laughs> We're good. That's a that's a smiling Cody Rhodes right there. So uh, I, I I'm I'm sure there's a bunch of people in the chat room installing it right now at this point. So awesome. So let's get. Uh, what about you, Katie? Anything uh, uh, really uh, exciting you in the news this Ooh, week? Ooh, um, just because I'm on my Periscope kick. Um, we don't we no longer need a Twitter account to sign up for Periscope, mm -hmm. which is kind of interesting because it's a turn away from. Uh, it was kind of pushing people into Twitter. You know, you need a Twitter account to even get into Periscope. And everybody wanted to join Periscope, so they all got Twitter accounts. And now it's not, that's okay. You don't need one anymore. Um, I think it's interesting because it really ups the anonym anonymity. There we go. I can almost talk. Uh, of the whole Periscope experience. And could go along with what we talked about last week with the whole adult film industry. And now... <laughs> <laughs> now you can register your triple X domain-based email address uh -huh. with your... <laughs> With your Periscope account. Exactly. And then it's not, I mean, you were you were connected to your Twitter handle, essentially, whenever you commented on a, a video or you were watching a video. And now you just need a phone number and you're setting up an account. So this way you're, there's less, I don't know, there's less connected to it. So is it going to, what, what's the effect? You know, when we take in, taken away identifiers on other social media accounts, what has happened and what could happen? <laughs> And you can watch Chili eat pizza. Yes, yes. <laughs> Chili eating pizza. Yeah, pretty much all my periscopes are us eating pizza. Thank yes. you, Slice. Yes. And you said, did you say that it's uh, actually separated? Like, because I know it's like I get, like I had today, I had like six people watched your thing, mm -hmm. but then there's like a hundred people were web viewers or something like that. So you say it's actually separating the web viewers. That's from what it looks like it's doing. What, mm -hmm. Like, uh, how did your numbers come up again? It was like twenty four and nine or something. Okay, it was... so it's like like twenty four, but nine were web. Yeah. So the rest are just people popping in. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That's a nice cat. That's my dog, Jose. <laughs> 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 I just saw that. I just 
like, yeah, it's a dog. It's a close up of, of Wicket there. Yeah. But uh, that's and then, awesome. And then you can, so it's, it's like this, I said, for it's private. This you can solves some of our problems because one of the problems in the school was they block Twitter. And we could go into Periscope. Mm -hmm. The only issue is that, uh, like, when we go to Periscope TV slash and then your username, that's where it's 404 would and mm -hmm. I, I, but I wonder if this might be a little extra workaround that you can kind of get into it without touching base with Twitter a little bit. So, um, but I mean, it could help when you're blocked in certain certain aspects like that for security. So, um, cool. I mean, you're just starting to see this. Well, Facebook, Meerkat with Facebook is the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, did we talk about that last week? I we think, just may have briefly. mentioned it. Yeah, it wasn't really much. Uh, it's up on Android. Mm -hmm. I know um, uh, Wheels in the chat room has been meerkatting his podcast experience. I saw it pop up a little bit earlier as well. Meerkatting us broadcasting to him while he's eating pizza or whatever uh so so that's been kind of fun to see and i love that you know like more people having a chance to kind of play with this so um I, I think it's it's a lot of fun you know i have a challenge this week for uh for the other podcast uh to try a new social so, social video whatever network a, a day for a week here try a day on periscope try a day on meerkat just Periscope things, Meerkat things, if you haven't yet, especially if you're on Android and just got Meerkat. Um, have some fun with it. See what you can see what you do and see what people react to. Like like Katie eating pizza. Mm -hmm. is, is apparently a big hit. Not yeah. so much Chilla. Chilla boy. Or my dog cat. <laughs> <laughs> Your dog cat. Cat dog. My oh, cat dog. All right. What else happened this week? <laughs> just real quick as mm -hmm. a as a as a recast. Um did you are you still using uh what's the duet display? Yes. So Duet Display, just so you know, updated today. <gasps> and um, they now support Windows. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. So you can extend any Windows laptop with your iPad and have a second, and I'm, I'm guessing, much higher resolution display than what your Remind device me, did I, did I buy it on my iPad or on my computer? You bought it on your iPad. On my iPad, so I can just connect it. Ooh, that's handy. Yes. That could be really handy. No, I, yeah, and, and the way I use it, I'm the weird guy with all the screens in front of me at the coffee shop. Yeah, and, so, I, and I think that's acceptable. To mm -hmm. be the weird guy at the coffee shop. With multiple displays. As long as you have multiple displays, you're allowed to be the weird guy. Like, well, I'm the guy that's going to sit down there for three hours, and I'm like, I need a workstation, but I'm going to keep refilling my coffee so you don't get mad at me. Well, and, so. and there's companies that have tried that before, and, and I want to revisit because we've obviously commented on this app but there, there's companies that have tried this and, and building a second display experience and mm -hmm. failed and, with battery powered usb I, right I, external displays that you carry with you and we oddly clip onto your laptop i just one of them was a, a pittsburgh company yeah i just think this is the perfect i think i think this is the a perfect alternative why reinvent the the screen Right. You're already carrying multiple ones of them. Why not? I mean, even to the point where I'll take my iPhone when I just like want to watch like a YouTube video and I'll just prop it up at the bottom of my laptop and, and, and you know, bring it in. So I'm not so I'm not like using like separate data or, or I can I'm, I can actually like turn off the data so I'm not getting texts or calls or anything during the video mm -hmm. and then just set it down there. It's linked in. It's bringing in the display and I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. Um, my only issue is I keep losing my connection on my iPad. I don't know if I just have old bad cords or something. Hmm. And that gets really annoying when it like keeps popping everything back and over and refreshing your screen over and over again. Hmm. Um, it has been kind of an issue for me. And it's a newer laptop, so I'm thinking like it's at least a 20, what, 13, I guess. But um, I, I don't know. I've had about a year. Maybe it's something that's funky with the ports. But uh, but other than that, no, it's a, it's a great thing. What, what was it, 15 bucks? Something I like that? I think something like that. I got it. I got it. Yeah, I think it was 15 because I think I got it for 10 on sale. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely worthwhile uh, if you are a little mobile and could use that extra screen have an ipad um it'll be nice it would be nice if they do kind of cross over and give you an android version eventually and maybe they are working on that yeah, uh, yeah but maybe not because they're, they're it's, ex ios developers aren't they are they they're, yeah the guys that made that are are ex apple that's apps. right so it's something about like the apple drivers that makes mm -hmm. it work so, yeah, but at least, so. at least on the, maybe on the iPad side. And of course they're bringing that over with the PC too. I mean, we're seeing, seeing the same with Re Reflector. Reflector was, um, what was it? I, it wasn't OS X only. Cause I noticed I could download a windows version when I went it to was, But it was iOS only. But it was iOS and, and only. See, that's where I think, so you have AirPlay on iOS, which is standard across iOS and right. Mac. You don't have that. You don't have Chromecast standardization until Android five lollipop and it's only supported if the manufacturer enables it 
So like I, my Samsung Galaxy S6 doesn't have it out of the box. Um, and then you have Windows phones that use Mirrorcast. Mm -hmm. So and some Android devices that have also put in the, the Mirrorcast or their own dongle type solution. Um, so I, th I think that's why I think you're going to see more companies adopting other technologies as they become more standardized. So now that Google has pushed forward with the Chromecast dongle and the ability to cast from the default OS, I think you're going to see that capability. Certainly. Especially if you wanted to, I think, I think it, it's even more for if you wanted to try to show or upplay a capability on a Chromebook and you wanted to show it to an audience, you really can't take a Chromecast and plug it into a projector. Um, so this is the way to do that, right? You take your computer, plug it into the projector, Chromecast from the Chromebook to Reflector, and then that's up on the screen. Or share the screen via WebEx or, or whatever remote viewing solutions you're using. Mm -hmm. All right, I want to touch base on two really quick stories. One, one, one important, one kind of fun. Uh, first of all, chip. Have you heard of chip? Uh, I, well, what you, one of you guys put this in here. But um, the world's first $9 computer. For nine dollars, you too can own a computer. So this this is like the next step of like Raspberry Pi, right? I think it's a smaller version of Raspberry Pi with a lot of the same feature functionality capability. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm trying to. Find There's not much video. You have to get went. something else in order to like you know get HDMI or anything like that. Uh, but you know, it's pretty much like I think it's a composite uh, port or something like that. Uh, but you know, again, for internet things, uh, they're actually sold out from I think the December and the January shipments already. So you probably won't get it for till like May if you want to get one now. Uh, according to the story that you put in here from CBS San Francisco, they one fun video by the way that they that they got <laughs> going on here. It's it's kind of cool. Uh, a lot of a lot of movements, a lot of fun. Uh, but it's a gigahertz processor, uh, 512 megabytes of RAM, four gigs of storage. Uh, that, that's that's pretty good. It surpasses fifty thousand goal, fifty thousand dollar goal by nearly one million dollars. Wow. Yeah, and I think you can you can get an actual modified version that has like a keyboard and a little screen. Mm -hmm. um, and it actually makes it look like an old school BlackBerry, which is kind of fun. It kind does. Of, gives <laughs> it that retro look. <laughs> that's awesome. That's so awesome. so I, I don't know. This is one of those things where I feel like you can get devices at that price point where where you were talking about, you know, trying to do something for a school to stream to every room mm -hmm. with a little bit of ingenuity and nine bucks a classroom. <laughs> you can do that. That's within a school budget. <laughs> yeah, that that's where I feel like a lot of these technologies giving giving people that either are less fortunate or are trying to do things in mass on a budget um, tools to, to build a computer or to even get on the internet. Um, these are, this is going to be the solution. And, and mm -hmm. like I said, at $9, I'd like to see them almost do something like one laptop per child where they're mm -hmm. 20 and for everyone that you buy for yourself, they're donated or maybe nonprofits get it at the $9 price point. Normal people like me and you get it for twenty, and every time you buy one, they donate one to somewhere. That'd be, That'd awesome. be awesome. If you start doing that, that was my idea. <laughs> um, but no, I, I think this is where this is where we can really take technology forward. And I think, like we were talking mm -hmm. about with Elon Musk last week, um, going to people to ask them for help, um, and, and and getting kind of that crowdsourced piece of information. This is this is leading us in the right direction and for every step forward we go about three steps back because we can't have nice things chilla <laughs> like a map editor like a map editor because google shut down the maps editor <laughs> after the ping android debacle i don't think we talked about this on the show but yeah so apparently they're using the you, you know there's the, the green that would indicate a park or forest and apparently somebody made an android uh at uh, uh, google android ping on an apple so and I, it's funny because this this news broke <laughs> in in the early hours of the morning mm -hmm. when it did break and I can't remember what it was but I, and I think it was on a Tuesday because I saw it and I thought well we should talk about this in the show, um, but that 
they ru- a they ruined it for others, and b this is just poor taste. I mean, you could it have is. used. You could have used this theory to get a lot of better ideas or concepts across, mm-hmm. and you decided to make it's like the the Calvin and Hobbes peeing mm-hmm. on the the car logo. I mean, come on. That I could I could have seen, and the interesting thing is, is I, what I'm surprised is either they took the map editor offline immediately, because this made this made headlines all day long in in the tech world. I can't I can't believe that there wasn't a runaway of these these types of occurrences all over the place after this got posted. So I don't know. I'm surprised there wasn't a big Chipotle ad somewhere <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> across the US. <laughs> Chipotle. There you go. That's taking advantage of this. Mm-hmm. And and that's where I I they could have done this could have brought forth a lot better ideas other than mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll have to work it over, at least until this cools off a bit, right? Mm-hmm. So, all right, uh, stuff going on. TEDx Pittsburgh is happening very, very soon. Get your tickets. Actually, the uh, the, the after-party tickets just went on sale. They're going to be down the road at Space Downtown. So go check that out. That's May 23rd. Go to TEDxPittsburgh.org for more information. And uh, also check out the awesome chat. I talked to Chris Daly over uh, one of the co-organizers of the group uh, uh, over there. So please check that out. Also, this week on Awesome Chat, I talked about the guy behind Clamor the mini podcasty app that uh, has been uh, uh, really kind of uh, taken over as, as far as the podcast community. There's been a lot of discussion about it. It's about 18-second clips. Think of Instagram for audio. And it's actually got a really powerful uh, multi-track editor in it, too, for such a little app. So Clamor, without the E, if you want to check that out. And uh, this Thursday, check out our posting and our, our talk about that. And uh, let's see, uh, of course, of Please check out the Sorgatron Media Creators newsletter over at Sorgatron.com. Create Festival coming up June 10th through 12th here in Pittsburgh to WWDC. June 9th. The epicenter of change, Chilla. <laughs> of course. Of course. That's what, that's what <laughs> Apple says. It, Apple said it and it shall be. Google, <laughs> Google I.O. May 28th and 29th. WordCamp Columbus in July uh, 17th and 19th. And of course, uh, we should really plug in uh, when it gets closer to Pittsburgh Comic Con. Because we'll be talking about it oh, yeah, and definitely. participating in it. Mm-hmm. That uh, starts uh, the weekend of September 11th. And yes. uh, we have a date for Chachi Plays. Aww. August 11th, I think it is. Uh, early August. Uh, the week before PodCamp, of, of all things. And of course, PodCampPittsburgh.com. Uh, dates, well, I, the, that date's not right. It's like the 8th. I think it's maybe the 8th, maybe the 9th. Anyways, PodCamp Pittsburgh is uh, the weekend of August 15th, but we're going to be doing Evening with PodCamp with Chris O'Connor from Lipson joining us uh, at the hardware store on May 27th. Did I get everything, guys? I think so. Sure. There was one I wanted to add, and I don't remember what it was now. So next week... Stay tuned. Something will be happening. Something. We will announce a date for, for stuff. something. For stuff. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. Chilla, what do you got going on? Um, we'll see some pictures soon, right? Just being mobile. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be posting pictures. Um, obviously, Instagram's pretty darn popular. So if you look at Wizard World Philly, I think it's tell the us hashtag. A, tell us about this Instagram. <laughs> it's Instagrams. No, but uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, that was the one... The one thing I, how I was actually keeping up from the con within the con was mm-hmm. was looking at people's Instagram feeds. Nice. So I'll be definitely getting some pictures up out there. I'm John Chichilla on the Facebooks, Chilla Photo on the Deviant Arts. Awesome, Dutters. What about you? You're uh, done. You're done with school for yeah. the moment. Well, yeah, and until like the end of the week. <laughs> 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 like this pause moment done. Gone. Back Did in you school. fail something when you're in summer school? No, sorry. No. That'd been funny though. <laughs> summer school for this. No, I have one class left this summer. Uh, this weekend, I will actually be out in Philadelphia Ooh. for a masquerade party at the Eastern State Penitentiary. Ooh, mm-hmm. That sounds like fun. Ooh. So I'll make sure. Maybe if if you guys are nice, I'll bring you back some videos of the shenanigans. Just periscope it. Yeah, I will. The, follow Ooh, my periscope. Go. I'm gonna do more than eat pizza. <laughs> <laughs> awesome good are you going to hang out and talk about cats with us on boss battle i, I may <laughs> there's this cat game that's in japanese that's been taking over 
since lunch last week. Yeah. <laughs> destroyed our lives. <laughs> it destroyed a lot of lives. We'll talk about it briefly here on Boss Battle. Uh, check out everything else. I, I hit the mic. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Awesomecast.net. <laughs> Follow us, Awesomecast, on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and, of course, live.awesomecast.net. You can join us here about 7 p.m. Tuesday nights, Eastern Time. And uh, please check out all the things and, and subscribe to us. Hey, there's a lot of stuff adding uh, to iTunes and Stitcher here in the coming week. So go search for Soaker on media and please just follow everything just subscribe to everything rate it while you're at it's it it's buy one get one free it's buy one get one free on the itunes store so uh and why don't you know, rate us please it helps it helps other people find the show if you're digging the show and chill is gonna throw down the mic he's <laughs> dropping the mic over there it's wow. so nice not having headphones we could just totally hit things yeah. and it doesn't bother any of us yeah it's completely <laughs> it's only gonna bother you guys at home it's completely okay if, if you rate you know what you should do it if you if you rate the the podcasts they're all free this so is go, true. Go this and rate the, them. This is not untrue. And you can download them all for free. Thank you to our <laughs> awesome chat room and rocking with us all night long. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.